In this video, we're taking a look at the boutique modules. Now, the boutique modules are found in this folder right here, and these are based on analog classics of yesteryear, and as such, they have some really interesting sonic characteristics and features. They're not really the all around kind of modules that you had in Bento Box, but they do make up for that with their own features that you don't find in the Bento Box modules. Okay, so we'll start with this one right here. This is the multi wave oscillator. This looks very much to me like it was based on the Roland SH101. It is just a single oscillator, but you can fade in multiple different waveforms here. So let's take a listen. Start off with our square. It's actually a pulse wave. And we can change the width there. And we can, of course, modulate that parameter as well. Then we have a sawtooth, or rather a ramp waveform. Then we have a sub oscillator. Now if we click on this, you can actually change the octave there. There's actually two octaves below the main oscillator. And then we have this pulse right here, which is again, two octaves below, but it's a pulse. It's not affected by this control up here for the pulse with modulation though. Notice there's no phase cancelling here because there's no detuning going on or separate phase drift for the different waveforms. This is one of the reasons why it is so good for bass, it stays solid in the low end. Next control here brings up the noise. We have two flavors here, white noise and pink noise. Pink noise is weighted more towards the lower end of the spectrum. It's got more bass and less high end. So pink noise is great for percussion and other kinds of sounds where you don't want a lot of high-end fizz, but you do want some nice low-frequency content. Okay, up here we have the reset parameter. We turn this on. We can reset the phase of this oscillator. And what we need to do is route something like an envelope into it, into the reset input there. And now we can have it reset per gate. Finally, we can also take off the tracking there. So use that as a static drone. And let's just take a look at modulating the pulse with real quick. We'll take the LFO output there, put it into mod A. We'll take mod A here. Tell it to modulate the pulse width. Of course, it only affects the pulse here, not the sawtooth. So this is probably my favorite oscillator in reactor blocks, just because of the sheer weight of the sound. It just sounds really, really good to me. So let's move on now to the next oscillator, this OS5. I've actually got this plugged into the mixer, so I'm just going to turn off the blue one here, and we'll go to this one here. I'm actually going to need to bring this up an octave, again, because we've got some very low octaves down here. So this is our first waveform here, and it's a single oscillator. But you've got an organ kind of control here where you've got draw bars. And you can introduce the different octaves here. And if you click on this part, you can actually change the waveforms as well. So this is a really nice one for getting more complex waveforms going. Now we also have the shape parameter here. Once you start turning this anti-clockwise, it starts to shape the oscillators, the waveforms, and we have pulse width. And unlike the multi-wave here, this actually affects all of the waveforms. So it's applying some kind of filtering to each one of the wave types here. Next over here, we have a really interesting control and it's oscillator stack. And then if we click on this icon, we can change the chords. So I'm just holding down one note. And one of the other great things you can do with this particular module is you can actually automate the levels here on all the different draw bars. And you can even modulate chord parameter. So 
So there's a lot of great sound design you can do just with this oscillator alone. And of course, you can load in multiple ones, and then you can start to use detune. So let's go now to our next module, the dual filter module, which is based on the sound key architecture from the Korg MS-20, as far as I can tell. And this has a lovely screaming kind of characteristic as we raise the resonance here. And so this resonance corresponds to this filter here. And of course, we've got high pass right here on the left hand side, which has its own resonance control as well. So this one has some really wonderful sound design potential especially for the more aggressive sounds. We take the output of this oscillator, let's put it into the FM. Now, since the resonance can do so much in this filter, pitch tracking becomes quite an important part of sound design with it. So let's take our pitch output here and bring it into the pitch input on the filter. And we can now tell this to start following our movements up and down the keyboard, basically following the pitch output of the note in module. Now there are two arrows here, and if you just click on the arrows there, you'll see it cycle through some different modes. So when the arrows are black, it means the respective filter that it's pointing at is following keyboard tracking. Now when it's hollow, it means it is following the filter tracking, but inversely. So this is actually tracking it in the opposite direction from the low pass. So when this is going up, this is actually going down. So you can actually hear this going down as I play up the keyboard. And now you can hear it, it's quite high as I play very low on the keyboard. So that's a really interesting sound design tool right there. So that's it for this video on the Boutique modules. I really do hope you've enjoyed it. These are some fantastic sound design modules in Blocks. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.